fear is darkness and awareness is light. So we maybe and so you kind of if anybody yeah if you if it, well I like that if fear is darkness and awareness is light you need to be you need to really look hard at people who are using fear in any of its manifestations yeah. about anything when they're trying to scare you or concern you about something you need to look real deep right. at who those people are because here's the dirty little secret fear works it does work leave your imaginary friend at the door it's time for carl and mike Whoa. Welcome. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Got the attention of everyone in the, in the coffee shop. Uh, welcome. Oh, what if they start looking at you? Yeah. They go, what the <laughs> There's fuck? only like three people in here, so sorry. Uh, sorry, Corner Bakery staff. Um, got a little excited on the welcome to Carl and Mike there. <laughs> what the fuck's it, going on? It was like, what? what? Shooting? Is there a shooting going yeah, on? Yeah, woke everybody yeah. up. Yeah. How you doing? Good. Feeling good? Yeah. Just got back from my workout. Yeah. So a lot different than 9.30 a.m. Yes. You don't work out at 9.30 a.m.? Are you kidding? Yeah. No. no. I might work out at, uh, it's got to be after, the clock has to be somewhere afternoon. I'm not a morning workout person. No. That would not be pretty. Some people are morning people. Are you a morning person? I, well, you are. kind of, by, yeah. I'm, I, we, I mean, we get up by 5.30. You know, for the most part, we yeah. Well, we set the alarm to take at the dog five. Out to go to the bathroom. Yeah. Well, the other morning I didn't get up to let Booger out when he was yelling at me. Because the Booger got a little. And usually, box. usually, yeah, he does. But usually, and I'll say, okay, come on up here, Booger. Come on, come on up on the bed. And he came up on the bed, all right. Crawled up around my head and pissed the on the wall get behind me. Out. I was fucking livid. Yes. Yeah, that'd be the end of Booger. Now that's the well. That's the only the second time he's ever done that. He what does he, that. What does that even mean? He, he's talking to me. He's saying, "Piss on you." Pretty literally. much. Literally. Yeah. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Oh yeah. And that's he 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 he's done that <laughs> twice now, and just well just in the last okay, few months. That's like, so, what do you do when Booger does that? Well, does Booger when, get a when, spanking? When does Booger go? I grabbed his grabbed ass out and the, threw him outside. Yeah. But. The uh, thing is, he wants some attention, and he wants you to get up and feed him, or let him outside, or something like that. Just gonna have to do it. Yeah, <laughs> Booker's got to learn some boundaries and ground rules here. I think, it is a cat. I, and, but see, I think Booger's thinking that I need to learn some boundaries <laughs> and some ground rules here. And uh, I don't piss on Booger, but he's been pissing on me. So, Maybe it's yeah. time you um, piss on Booger. Put him down. Yeah. <laughs> How old is Booger? Gonna be sixteen. Oh yeah, he's getting yeah. up there. Yeah. yeah, so it could be that he's got old man bladder or something too. It I don't could know. just be he's an old man now. He don't care. It's like get off my lawn, you know. Yeah, he's, I want it, you it, up. I don't care. What are you gonna do yeah. to me yeah, at this point in game? Watch this. Hike my leg. Yeah. And piss. Yeah. Oh. Kind of sometimes I'd so like anyway. to be a little more booger in my life. Yes. <laughs> so yes, uh, more of a morning person, I guess. We get up. And get going because Nita's got to go to work. You yeah. know, and I get it's nice up of and you to start, get up with yeah. her because yeah. you didn't have to get up. No, I get up. I fix breakfast every morning. You're the breakfast fixer? I'm the breakfast fixer. Mm -hmm. And uh, she gets up and meditates. And I need to start meditating. I've decided after last week's episode when I was. Yeah. Cranky? Cranky. Cynical. Boogerish? Bitchy. Yeah. Booger. I was pissing on stuff last week. <laughs> <laughs> I was pissing on stuff. Uh, I need to. Meditate more. What do you think meditate, meditate will do for you? Calm me down. Yeah. There's two things. Okay. And everybody that knows me would say the exact same. Yeah, meditation would be good for you. And <laughs> quit fucking watching TV. Or at least the news part of it. Because it just pisses you off. It does. There's well, so and, and reading a lot of this stuff does, too. I went in and changed my Flipboard mix. Did you? Yeah, I changed it up a little bit. Got rid of some of the news feeds and and put in some pulled in some other stuff. So, so what, we'll see what that does. I don't know what that. What are we going to talk about on Carl and Mike? Flowers. And <laughs> 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 welcome to another episode of uh, Martha Stewart. How do your garden grows? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You see, where this show is about politics, sex, religion. <laughs> 
talk about Ed things. flowers. And things you don't talk about. Not <laughs> master gardening with Mike. No, no. Well, there is a show for that, I'm sure, out there. Oh, there's probably half a dozen of them. Yeah. Anyway, what's going on in the world? What's going on with you? Besides, so you're going to meditate? Like yeah. for 20 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day? Yeah. Do it in the morning just to get started. It's just kind of a... Um, a good way to begin. I'm, I'm working with this lady <clears throat> uh, who uh, has been teaching us some meditation classes. This is an older lady. It's an Indian lady. I'm not going to mention her name, but uh, she teaches here in town at the Hindu temple. And um, I've been working with her on producing these drawings for various poses. And in doing those drawings, I'm learning the poses way better than You're I would by just, just drawing the poses. Yeah, it's a sequential set uh-huh. of drawings that tells you how to do the properly execute the pose and breathe, when to breathe, when not to breathe. And um, this, I just got to get back to it. It's just another one of those habits. It's, it's, I, I do not understand. We talked about this. Some habits are easier to form and maintain than others. And this is this is going to... I need to quit fighting this one and just do it. Yeah. Well. Yeah, because some of the other habits that I've started, I mean, I, I, I just made a uh, point of doing it, and it, I do it now, and I just don't even think it's just part of my day. And th- this needs to be part of my day. Well, number one, I think you got to have a decision. You have to get to the, de- yeah. to the decision stage. Of things, and for me, it always helped to have like you know the bike thing. Like I knew I had a race that riding across mm-hmm. Iowa, and I was nowhere in shape to do that. So you there was a, a motivation and a you deadline. A deadline. Yeah, it always helps too. I've struggled. You know, I've I've meditated at times and not meditated most of the time. Yeah, and um, yeah, that one I've I don't know. It's um, I like to go, 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 brain-wise. Well, and that's that's part of the deal is that yeah. you, you need to, it, or I'm not saying you need to, but I need to calm my brain down. I do a lot and, more, and yeah. I think it's a calming it. brain. I do more, I'm more, try to be more conscious of staying in the present moment. A lot of, a lot of Eckhart Tolle. You ever read him? Who? Eckhart Tolle. No. A New World. Uh-uh. You never read Power of Now? No. Really? Is that like Be Here Now? Uh, better. Power Now is one of the best books I've read. Really? In life. I put them in the top ten. It's a really huh. good book. Seriously? Yeah. Then he had a, a, bra- a New World or something is his second book, which was as good. But it did help me get more. Uh, so his whole thing is, you know, you're in the present, or the, you're in the past or the future, like all the time. And getting getting centered in the and being conscious of your present where you're at mm-hmm. what's going on uh, there's a lot of power in now hence the name of the book well, power of now and but see that's a lot of what uh meditation is about and a lot of yeah what it, it's it's putting aside everything that's happened putting aside what may happen in the future and just focusing on right now and then eliminating all thought on either it's kind of like you're you're on a knife edge yeah eliminating all thought part is always difficult for me it is and a lot of it it uh i can let it let the thought come let it go mm-hmm. let the thought come let it yeah come. They, there's exercises and stuff that we've taught that we've been taught by her and a couple other yoga instructors that just concentrate on the breath different kinds of breathing exercises that just really calm your mind down just calm it down a lot right and I could use that. Right, kids? So you think that would make you more mellow, not charged up about things? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I do. Do you think it will make you happier, Michael? Yeah, probably. Well, is, is it going to make me happier or is it going to make me not dissatisfied? I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know. It's not that I'm not happy. Yeah, on a scale of one to ten, where ten is joy, pure joy, and zero is depression, where do you think you, where's the, where is the barometer? I don't know, one and a half. <laughs> no, um, 
It's kind of a sliding scale. It just depends on what's going on. So there's I'd a say, slide somewhere between? Uh, seven to nine. Seven probably. to nine? Yeah. Oh, so you're pretty happy. Yeah. Because I feel like, yeah. yeah. Actually, I struggle. I'm actually. not giddy. Right. Yes. Yeah. But you're but content. I could be. Would content be the right word? No, I wouldn't say I was content. I was kind of restless, I think, a little bit. Yeah, I think yeah. I'm more restless now than I was when I was working, doing the same thing all the time. I had a, a routine. Yes. Yeah, I'd get up in the morning, I'd go to work, get the shit done, come home, eat dinner, get up, you know, the whole thing. And now the routines, are there is no routine during the day. It varies. So I'm fishing in a lot of different ponds, several different ponds, podcast being one of them, right. gardening being one of them landscape design and uh, woodworking and don't know what else hmm. got yeah. a call yesterday and they want me to be on the board for the neighborhood you yeah. know thing so yeah. I thought yeah that's four meetings a year I can handle that so you're gonna be part of the neighborhood association well it's, yeah it's it's yeah it's I don't know what it is we'll see so if it's something I haven't done it's kind of unlike me, so I thought, well, it, it, maybe that's the reason to do it. You're coming, you're coming a little bit of a joiner. Ooh. Yeah, come on. Come uh, over to the hey, joiner hey, side. Shut up, Carl. <laughs> Don't tell anybody. You're connecting. Mm-hmm. You're joining. Cajoin. See? Well, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's part of it. You know, when you work outside, when you work it, out of the house, you have to work harder to make outside connections. Yes. Everything's... Right. Well, I, think now, see, I don't know if that's right or not. Yeah, a lot more friends in your 20s than you see, have in your 50s, would you not say? Maybe acquaintances, but actual friends and stuff that uh, are keepers, that are stickers, I would say probably. Maybe I should put Probably a, more maybe. now, actually. I think you, or I, I feel like I've accumulated more. I don't know that I've jettisoned anybody. I, I guess maybe it isn't you have more friends, but you see your friends more, it seems like, in your 20s. Probably. You well, got you got all married. When you get married, if something happens, they just suck, no suck you right out of the... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want you to be around anyone. Yeah. Is that it? No. Well, there's I'm, an element of that. There, well, there's probably... A, or why am I not enough? Yeah. I think there's, I, well, I think there are some people that are that way, yeah. A lot of people are not, but there's right. definitely some people that are real jealous like that. Just, have you ever dated anybody who was just, like, insanely jealous? No. I did date someone who was mad because I wasn't insanely jealous. Really? They were trying to make you jealous? Yeah. Like, if I was jealous and I wasn't, then I didn't love them enough. Or Ooh, something like that. Wow, that's a good twist. I never was a real jealous type. But that was not my either so way. So what did they do to try and make you jealous? You know, talk to other people. <laughs> you know, I, normal to me, normal Yeah. interactions. But, yeah, it was like, you know, I didn't care enough. So jealousy somehow got tied in with caring, mm -hmm. which is really screwed up. It's a weird deal, the jealousy did you have, Do you have someone mm -hmm. jealous? Yeah, there, somebody in college was just, like, uber jealous. Just so if you talk uh, to another girl, so. she was all over that. Well, it's not so much that, but didn't want me to go to life drawing classes where you draw nude women and men, by the way. And uh, it was part of the curriculum. I had to have it. It was required right. classes. But she didn't that want was, you to go? Oh, no, no. I hated really? that shit. Oh, yeah, just would throw a fit. And, um, you're going like you're going to. Or if I was if if I was if we went out to eat somewhere and we were at a restaurant and I happened to look at somebody else. Yeah. Which you know. Yeah, women in general tend to not like that. Yeah. Or or the, the waiters or something. Oh. You know, I'm mean, just like I mean. But you weren't be, looking like leering or. No, I wasn't like licking my chops or anything over something. It wasn't any, like but sometimes it was just, women comes through this. Yeah, it was room just here it was, and you it, was, uh, get, it, it would get real uh, possessive. Not possessive, but. Um, There was an element of possession to it, and and yeah, it was odd. It was real difficult. Yeah. That was a real interesting relationship. But I remember Suzanne still doesn't let me forget it. Uh, uh, when I remember Uma Thurman? Well, of course you killed oh, Bill. <laughs> women with knives. When she first came on, before, oh, way before yeah. the women with knives, like early Uma. 
What was uh, early Uma? Uh, I think she was in a movie with Michelle Pfeiffer and uh, Malkovich. Oh, ooh, that era. Remember nice that? Nice combo. Yeah, I, I forget the name of that film, but I don't know. She was on, and I had a, I just had a uh, un, what's the word? Unfiltered reaction to Uma. Yeah. And what did you say? I said, oh, you know, kind of like, whoa, oh my yeah. God. Yeah. And Suzanne was like, you know, whack across the. Or I think I, oh, I think she said that I shushed her. Like, hold on, shh. Just admit. That really did not go oh, well. Oh, you shushed her in favor of some other. In favor woman. of Uma. In yeah. Favor of another woman. Yeah. See, I don't, I don't think of people uh, like still, Uma still, as, as other women. Yeah, I don't She's either. not the other. Like, I'm not going to date like, Uma. No, you're not going to be getting a call from her. Yeah. So it's not like it's, it's a big threat. It's just like right. an idealized, it's pushed out there as an idealized version right. of a woman. Right. Yes. With knives. <laughs> well, <laughs> yes, you've got your own thing there. Yeah. But yeah, so, so that happened like 25 years ago. I'll still get that occasionally. So a little, a little, little dig. About Uma? Yeah. Really? Well, the time I shushed. Have, have you uh, That's put on Kill Bill? You need I, to put on Kill Bill. You need to get Kill some Kill Bill. Bill. Oh. See, I haven't even seen Kill Bill. You haven't? I haven't. I know. Oh, your favorite film. God. i got to watch it just for you. Ooh, and then you got to follow it up with Kill Bill, too. Yeah. You really do. Uh, Quentin Tartino it tends to be a tad violent. Oh, yeah. Thank <laughs> so, so that really knocked out oh, the dating there's, possibilities there's, with Suzanne. Oh, I think yeah. I did see Pulp Fiction with her, and that was about it. Oh, that was, that's yeah, intense like I, I'm shit not there. seeing him again, ever. That's, yeah. Yeah. I, went, I saw, uh, what's that, uh, Django or whatever movie he did oh, recently? Django. Django. Yeah. I watched that by myself. Yeah. Uh, on TV. Yeah, no, Nita would not watch out. I saw a part of that, and, and that was enough Yeah. that that I knew that Nita would not, right. was, you know. I think it, when we were it, when we were earlier married, she would, like, tolerate. Yeah, she's no violence now. No, it. there's no, no tolerating that kind of shit now. It's no. just like she's got better things to do, which, I, you know, that's fine. Right. I, I got no problem I just with don't that. like when they get, uh, when they try to get um, morally superior about it. Like, she'll say, they'll say, or she'll, I'll see you, Suzanne, I guess. Let's see, you know, I don't want to put that kind of stuff in my head. So I'm okay. sitting here watching it, yeah. enjoying Yeah, the and movie. if you want to put that kind of shit in your head, yeah. you can. Yeah. It's, so that's bullshit. It's a guy stuff. It's a guy thing. It's a guy download. you got to have that. Right. I it like makes that, guy sp- download. Uh, it's a guy download. you got to have that. Just like right. chicks got to watch, you know, uh, you got mail or some bullshit Right, like and I'm not that. saying to her, well, if you want to put yourself into that. Yeah. Trashy emotional manipulation. <laughs> I don't do that. <laughs> that. That would be not Carl, good. Carl, Did I just do it online? Right here. It's getting deeper and deeper <laughs> and deeper. Well, now, it is trashy, you know. Yeah. The, 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 you know, the gooey rom, rom, rom-coms. Yeah. I mean, I'm just it's just emotional manipulation. Mm-hmm. Okay, he's gone. He's come back. You know, does he love me? <laughs> uh, looks looks grim here at the seven minutes left in the movie yeah. point. Let's, oh, ra- let's wrap this up. Give me my ring. <laughs> and then oh, something happened. Yeah, like you knew it was going to. Yeah. Okay. Do I say? Well, I don't want to put my mind with predictable, emotionally manipulating rom- romantic comedies. Yeah. No. So. Don't get on me about True Detective. That was dark. Remember True Detective? Oh, there's a new one coming on. I know. This, I'm kind of excited it, about that. Well, I, it, and they're starting to tease on it, but I was uh, read something the other day that teases have really nothing to do. Well, they're just sending you down a, a road? A rabbit, yeah. A rabbit hole, if Down you a rabbit hole. But if it's anywhere close to the last one, with Matthew McConaughey yeah. and uh, who are, isn't it women going to be uh, doing it this year? Woody Guthrie, no, it was Woody, Woody Harrelson. Woody Harrelson, good friend Woody Harrelson. Yeah. Somebody told me they're going to be women detectives. That would be good so. in Southern Louisiana with like knives. <laughs> and I know sick. I should listen back to Women with Knives episode and just really to see. Sick I clowns. forget what the thing is with clowns Let's, can we talk about clowns for a minute yeah you, are you, do you have a thing about clowns i didn't until recently now i'm thinking you get this straight i'm gonna bring in like a 47 year old man dressed in a clown outfit to do a little clown thing with my seven-year-old kids 
Nah, I don't think so. Yeah, that's kind of odd when you say it like that. <laughs> <laughs> Is that not what's happening? 47 year old guy gets dressed up as a clown and then he entertains the little seven year old Yeah, and kids. the guy lives with his mom and has, yeah. has never been married. <laughs> yeah. got a. There's a creepy element to clowns An now. An unhealthy relationship but I didn't really to have. I was fine cats. with clowns when I was a kid. I never saw the people who didn't like clowns. I was never scared of clowns. I tell you what. Were you scared you, of clowns? No, I wasn't at all. But if you look up Google clown images, yeah. there's some real creepy, creepy stuff. Clowns. Yeah, I forget which image I was working on, but and I kind of stumbled down that path. Yeah. Because, you know, when I'm, do, when I'm trying to come up with images and stuff, I just go in all kinds of directions. Yeah. And this one, oh, whoa, Carl, this is like... Google, just Google clown images? Yeah, or if you want to just get right to it, just just Google scary clowns. <laughs> you know, it, it just, it, it's, oh. Yeah, I would probably it's, hire a magician. It's, it, yeah. As opposed to clown. So a 47-year-old guy dressed in a tux pulling rabbits out of hats is well, okay? It's a little better. At least it there's is? an intellectual part to it. Oh, really? <laughs> I'm banking on that. Is it the flags or the rabbit that's more intellectual? Uh, yeah, maybe not. Maybe yeah. You're killing my dream on uh, magicians, too? Yeah. Which creepier to you? Magicians or clowns? Oh, clowns. Yeah. Yeah, clowns. I just, I don't know. You know, it was the, on uh, American Horror Story that was the carnival thing. Right. Did you see any I of that? See American oh, Horror Story. oh, oh. A lot of bad clowns? A couple a carnival. of them. A couple so, of them. Yeah, yeah, there were some. Yeah, you have to start that one from the beginning. It's about ten episodes. Just like binge watch it. But maybe Keep a sack of potato chips. Yeah. Some I need popcorn. To binge watch something. I, have, I think I'm going to binge watch Breaking Bad. Oh, that's one that I, we haven't watched. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but then maybe I've lost my. Maybe it's a sign of lost innocence because clowns are kind of in. Uh, they're not elevated like they used to be. Have we lost our innocence? Was it because of that Gates guy or whatever that was the that that serial killer in Chicago oh, was a clown, wasn't I he? I that guy was a clown. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, no, really, I don't think that's I don't. You know, I think they still have. Is America, have we I lost our innocence as a country that we no longer trust that kind of shit? Trust the clowns. Send in the clown. I think there's a certain level of was it, uh, was it always just the skepticism vehicle? about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know, that's you, you as far as losing our innocence, I think don't you think people have a certain kind of skepticism and are a little wary when they look at a priest now? The Catholic priest. I would. Easy yes. into the religious part. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, and it springs up a very interesting thing, because I do think we've gone a little out of control on this because I just read about this lady who's two kids and they keep getting arrested because she lets them go to the park by themselves. And they're yeah, on their way walking they're home. What, they're, what, they're, they're six, they're six and, and eight or yeah, nine. Yeah. On the way walking home, they get arrested. And this last time, they got put in the cop car. And by the time the ordeal was over, it was 11 o'clock at night and they had not had any food or anything. Yeah, that's... That's... Uh, that's a, a little too much, but you know that. And I, mean, I think I was a kid. I ran everywhere. And I did too. And I lived in Chicago. Yeah. Well, and I was in Dallas, and it was nothing for mom and dad. Didn't think anything about letting uh, this friend of mine, Randy, and I, who lived across the street, to get up at four thirty or five, yeah. and get our fishing gear together, and walk a mile and go fish at a creek that was over away from everything. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't anything close around. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah, I ride my bike so, five ten yeah. miles away from home. Yeah, and so. Um, yeah, exactly. We used to ride bikes too. At a too. quarry or yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I just I, I can't imagine letting a kid do that now. And I think part of it. All right. So here's my question to you: Is it really society's much more dangerous? Or are we just aware no, of the I dangers hear, that are there? I think we're more we're exposed. Okay, to, so then you should let the kid it. run as much as he did before. Then but why? So why are you saying I wouldn't let him? Uh, because I'm susceptible to the same so you're fear admitting that, that you don't think it's any worse than it was do you think it's worse than it was in the 50s or 60s only 70s? in that there are more people and that people and people live more in a more of a condensed environment and i think because people are more aware of it you know that's a real good question i i don't think there are i don't think there are any more priests violating kids than there were 
40 or 50 years ago. I don't think there's any more uh, murders than there out. were per, per capita. There are any more perverted clowns than there were 30 years ago? Well, sure, there's more, but there's more people. So it's the well, percentage, percentage wise. Percentage I, of clowns are still the same. I, yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't. So think. the danger really hasn't evolved. Expanded other See, than the, our awareness in the, in the of the old, danger. Yeah, in the old days, you would have to be exposed to a scary clown, and it wasn't going to be on TV because you were watching Ed Sullivan show, right? Right. And it wasn't going to be on radio. So where would you get exposed to one? You didn't have Google where you could look up scary clowns and like scare the living bejeebus out of yourself. Right. So uh, because you have all that stuff, now we have all those opportunities that technology has afforded us I think it becomes I do think the news played a role in that yeah oh uh, I think it played a huge I think the media plays a huge role in it and just the accessibility of a lot of stuff that wasn't just just think of all of because crimes right now are down right? yeah crimes yeah. Are down this a is a safer yeah, a place than places ever are, before yeah. and yet nobody's and yet nobody is letting their kids go by themselves more than a block away yeah, from home. Yeah, crime is down, yet more people are talking about needing guns to protect themselves, right? Right. And, uh, or their their parents are not letting them walk home from uh, school. Right. So, so acting as if it's a much more dangerous place, when yeah. in reality, it's not that dangerous. Yeah, but who's gonna who's gonna take the chance? See, that's the, that's the problem right there. Do you want? Do you, Carl? Now, Carl, do you want to take the chance with your child that it's not as dangerous as that we think it is? When you're when you get this gut feeling in you that it is, because the stuff you're you're exposed to. See, and here's the, here's the difference. We are now exposed to more stuff than we were when we were a kid, so we have a feeling that there's more of it going on when there's probably not. Does that make sense? Right. That, I think that there's something about Does, that. Did you let your kids run? I didn't have kids, so it's a little hard. I like to think, not having kids, that I would let my kids no, have some no, element uh -uh. of freedom. No, we didn't. I don't no, think no, my no, wife no, would. No, we watched it. We, we held a uh, tighter rein on them than they would. I would have probably never let Perry... Now I'm, now, I'm also being a sexist here, you know, because I get girls right. and, and, I mean, daughters and sons. I would have never let Perry do what I did at the age that I was that I did it. I, it would just scare the living crap out of me, go to a creek. And we had a creek close to the house. I would be worried, worried shitless that he's going to fall in and drown or whatever. But, uh, or, or, you know, somebody was going to pop, some scary guy was going to, or clown was going to pop out of the bushes and grab him off and take him out in the woods and right. whatever, you know. Right. Um, I just don't think people were exposed to all that kinds of stuff back then. But the reality might be that there's less chance that Perry would have that happen to him than there was when you were doing it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and even then the chance is pretty small, is it not? But it is. But again, all you need it's is one, one and then yeah. it's catastrophic. Well, yeah, it's one. So it's it's a, catastrophic, and that's why people buy insurance, and that's why a lot of par parents give their kids phones at an early age. They do it for safety. They do it so they can get control of them, and it's an insurance policy. So is basically what it is. They want to know where they are. So what does that do to the kid? I don't think the kid's really cognizant of it. That you're being protective. Of yeah, them. I don't. I don't think. I don't think they. They think the phone is a cool thing where they can call their friends. I don't think they realize that it's an electronic leash with a GPS system that tells the parents exactly where you are and what you're doing and who you're with. Maybe you know who right. knows what what all it does. But I think there's a lot of parents that do that. Just it's like a lot of people. You know, want to have a when they go on road trips, want to have a phone. Right. Right. Yeah. In case something happens, well, you know, phone, yes. in case you have a flat tire. Well, you had a flat tire. What did you used to do when you were a kid? You'd get out and fix a fucker. Right. Or you'd hitchhike into the nearest town. Well, we right. don't do that anymore. So got a phone. Not, don't hitchhike, yeah. Yeah. Don't want to call. Yeah. It, that's strange it's kind of weird. Which came first, the fear or the technology, right? Because cell phones I think really the did. I think the technology came first and the fear followed. All right. So now you've got this the technology. Exposure. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I, th I think technology stirs the pot on that. I think it definitely, when I say technology, I'm talking about TV, cable. I'm talking about dumb technology. I'm just talking about well, more I was of, talking more about what came first, 
the cell phone allowed parents to mm-hmm. kind of have electronic leash. Mm-hmm. Pre-cell phone, so you had kids pre-cell phone. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, they didn't have any cell phones. So do, would they, did they have a longer leash when they got cell phones or, or do they? No, have? I don't think they do. No, I think it, it, it. I think the fact that it's you can call them and yank on it makes yeah. it shorter. Yeah, that may I would be think in, so too. In, from a distance standpoint, it may be greater, but because you can say you can call them and say you need to get home now. Whereas before they were out there twisting around, didn't have a phone, you couldn't call them. You had no idea where they were. You may have had a general vague idea where they were. Yeah. But. Uh, yeah, and I remember getting in trouble. Because I didn't come home at mm-hmm. dinner time, uh-huh. and my mom was yelling down uh-huh. the street, and I was two and if blocks And over. if you had had the phone, and your mother she had the phone, them. she would yeah. have called at 6.01 because you were supposed to be there at 6. Where the fuck are your car? You're supposed to be yeah, on. Yeah, you're right. So I think there's a lot of that that goes on. But no, our kids didn't have phones, but it really wasn't a thing then. You know, that was it was really kind of getting started, and you certainly didn't have kids that had cell phones. But now I think it's just a matter of course that kids get cell phones early. You know, and right. in, in fact, uh, Aaron's talking about when Simon's going to get a phone. You know, he's only three. <laughs> but, you know, the funny thing is that he, he can sit there with a pad and a phone and play games. He gets it. He, right. he can he can already manipulate the device. Yeah, kids, especially I hear with the iPad, are just yes. go right to yes. it. Yes, and so uh, they're just going to grow up with that. It's who they are. It's going to be a part of them. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Now, is that a good thing? Is it a bad thing? I, I, you could argue both sides. Yeah. Point, counterpoint. Point. It's time for point, counterpoint. And I'm sure, let's guess what side Michael's going to be on. <laughs> We're going to guess. He's going to be on the I'm going to say that I'm pro-technology. You're going to say you're pro? Yeah, and you're going to be negative technology. Wow. That's, yeah. All right, I'll try to do that. Go ahead. Give me your pro statement. I think the ability to be able to keep track of my son and my kids is fabulous and I want to know exactly where they are at yeah. all times yeah. in sounds- case something happens and I need to get hold of them or, or uh, uh, they can pick up something on the way home for me all right. I think I can I destroy think- you in a, in a few seconds here huh? worked well for Russia then in a What's that? Russia always kept track of their people and stuff like that you got a little police state with your child Yeah, but they were doing that without technology I know now they can mm-hmm. do it even better but how does that work out? It doesn't really work out. <laughs> We're not Russia, Carl. Huh? We're not yeah, Russia. Yeah, but you're acting like him. Huh? You're acting like him. You're the state checking out the the state Russia, checking out eavesdropping in, on everybody's lives. And you're Are you like, calling me a communist? I'm calling you a communist, yeah. Your, your need to use technology to keep an eye on your children at yeah. all times is kind of big brother-ish. Oh, it's very big brotherish. In a Russian kind of way. I just slipped out of it. Yeah, you did. You can't hold it. Oh, no, I can't hold it. <laughs> see, yeah, that's, I maybe that's how we do it. We we flip the rolls and then see how long we can hold it. Yeah. Yeah. You th- you I see had you at it, Russia. Yeah, you had me at Russia. Yeah, yeah. It didn't take long. <laughs> okay, we'll put the stopwatch on All there. Right. He caved at five seconds. Yes. We'll yeah. We'll try that next week. Yeah. And that'll be my turn. I'll have yeah. to switch to uh, uh, take the other point. Yeah. It's a good exercise, actually. It actually is. Gets you to think. So we try tripping each other up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, once again, we've come up with clear, decisive answers to the problems of are we safer? Are our kids safer in today's society or not? I I, I don't know if you could say they're safer. I think they're... Crimes down? What else is there to say? Is, Is... Pedophilia crimes up? Not that I know of. My understanding is crimes are down across the board. No, and let's say let's just go and say that they're not. But the concern over them and the anxiety about it. So, in other words, the anxiety the level down, is down. Anxiety is up. up. Right. Should be kind of. And back when the when the crimes were up, the anxiety should have was yeah. down. Yeah. So it's, it's, not it's even like conscious well, I think if crimes are down and anxiety's up, that's why gun sales are up. Right. You know, it's easy to sell fear. They, I think uh, fear is uh, a motivator. Yeah. And it's a motivator for some parents to buy phones. I think it really is. Well, I think gun sales. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, and I think 
the ironic thing about that is you're not safer with guns. You're more, much more likely to be yeah. killed. Children get or the, children. Get the yeah. gun, shoot the yeah. gun. It's a way more dangerous environment you've created for yourself uh, because the bottom line is uh, it's fairly rare for a guy to come marching in your house yeah. kind of like in cold blood, yeah. which is really, isn't that the big fear, right? It's the in cold blood, right? Yeah. Family sleeping at yeah. home and two convicts uh, mm -hmm. types come in mm -hmm. and tie them all up and kill them. That's yeah. the fear. That doesn't happen. No, it it's doesn't. microscopic but in but, number. But you can spin that yarn and get somebody all tied up in knots and and ready to march out and buy a gun. Right. Well, it, and then it becomes the same argument, right? Mm -hmm. It only has to happen once to you, and it's catastrophic. That's right. Yeah. Fear is a uh, uh -huh. fear is a clever son yeah. of a bitch. Yeah. Yeah. It really is. Um, and people that use but it. But it's, it's still it's illogical it, and it's and not. I know. You, you and I are going to get out into a car and 1.5 million people a year across the world die in car accidents. Yeah. Okay, 1.5 million. All right, that's, about, that's way dangerous than... Uh, and that and, sounds like I, a lot of people and it actually is a lot of people. But let's say 1.5 million people die on one of their trips that they take. How many trips do they from point A to point B, does that one individual make in a year? Okay, right, lots. Times how, how many, many people, people there are. who are actually right. making those it's trips. Still so small, it's still small, but it's, it's, it's in, an in danger factor. Yeah. It's way higher. Yeah. It's way higher yeah. than you being uh, someone coming in your home and robbing, killing, or raping mm -hmm. any one of the three. Mm -hmm. Way higher. Yeah, but the, the uh, 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 privilege of driving a car is not written in the Constitution, Carl. Yeah, I know. You're going to go there, aren't you? <laughs> no, I will. You, you know, where else is there to go? Because the guns. Well, and yeah. then the chances of our government taking out. Oh, don't get me started. Uh, yeah, let's yeah. please. Let's don't get, we're, we're, we're almost there. <laughs> <laughs> you just slowly yeah. sucked me into there. Yeah, that's right. And I'm not going there, Michael. No, I'm holding uh, out because... Yeah. Uh, we're better than that, Carl. Yes. So maybe we can take... Maybe we should take back the clown. Maybe it's not so scary after. No, it still is. It is scary. Yeah, they're, they're scary. <laughs> Clowns are still scary. Yeah. But life goes on. Yeah. And once again, we've solved nothing. Yes. But we've talked about it. But we've, we've brought no, awareness. We've solved nothing, but we've made no promises. We didn't. No, we didn't promise you we were going to solve any questions. We we're going to just think any about Any problems. Them. Yeah. No, we're just like, we're flailing about just like pretty much everybody else is. Well, we discussed it. Isn't that we, enough? Uh, yeah. <laughs> we didn't solve anything. Yeah. The realization to me, fear, fear is darkness and awareness is light. So we maybe and so you kind of anybody, of yeah. If you if it, well, I like that. If fear is darkness and awareness is light, you need to be you need to really look hard at people who are using fear in any of its manifestations yeah. about anything when they're trying to scare you or concern you about something. You need to look real deep right. at who those people are because here's the dirty little secret fear works it does work and with that <laughs> we're out <laughs> join us on uh get the show notes and links for this episode dear listener at carlamike.net and of course we're on social media everywhere carl and mike you can't get away from us really can't instagram yeah. no we're it's there sad we're there yeah. It is uh, SoundCloud now. Big Our presence. latest episodes are on SoundCloud. Hey, there's billboard coming to you to your <laughs> yeah. neighborhood. The new Carl and Mike billboards will soon be planted. Uh, billboards, bus boards. Do they still do that? Bus they, boards. They, they do, do do bus boards, but it's usually real estate agents. I don't oh. know why. We'll do signs on the side of Uber cars. Yeah, we'll I like be the that. first. The Uber boards. The Uber boards. Yes, you could be listening to Carl and Mike. Leave your driving. <laughs> At home, it's time for Carla Mike. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, peace. Out. <laughs>